All right, so we are here with Ms. Debbie Allen, founder of the Community Cancer Awareness Group out of Person County. And so we want to find out more about your work with that group, as well as all the other things that you've been involved in throughout your life. But we're going to start at the beginning. So please tell us about growing up here in the Person County community. Well, growing up in Person County has always been a pleasure because you learn, you learn so many different things about life from different people. And in my neighborhood, as we grew up, it was like people that cared for one another's family. If my daddy had a hog, he shared that hog with the neighbor. And if that neighbor had a garden, he shared the uh, garden with all the neighbors. And that's the way we grew up as a close-knit family, which was mostly friends and family. We had uncles here on this side, uncles on that side. And up the road, we just had family that which became friends as well as family. Uh, but growing up, I was in an uh, era where uh, I did not know what uh, racism was. I wasn't taught that. So we had all kinds of friends come into the house and eat with us. And uh, I remember as I was in the second grade, some people moved into our neighborhood. There was uh, the Harris's. And I became friends with them because I walked down the street and I asked them, I said, hey, what are y'all doing here? And my best friend still to the day is Charles Anthony Harris. And uh, we've been friends ever since second grade. So I started going down there every day and they couldn't get rid of me. Miss Harris had to cook me turnip salad, stuff like that. My mom made biscuits up for James Earl and Anthony, which lived down the street. And growing up in, in my neighborhood was a time that if you came to my my mama's house, you had a place to, to lay your head. It didn't matter who you was or what. Uh, and she, uh, my dad and mama always fed the neighborhood people through a cookout. Everybody ate in the neighborhood, and it was just a awesome time of growing up, a childhood that, you know, when you look back now, you things that we took for granted that we wish we had back. There was real genuine love back then. Everybody cared for one another back then. Everybody showed love. I remember a time when my mom used to walk up and down the street when the neighbors got sick or whatever. Miss Mamie Henderson, Jesse, Petty Ford, and uh, Miss Doll up the street. She'd walk and, know, and, and see about them and stuff. That's where I think the care came in at. And then if somebody died in the neighborhood, she just wouldn't go and sit at that person's house. She'd go wash dishes and cook. And then she'll sit and entertain their guests and help them. And, you know, I saw a lot of caring in that with my mom and stuff like that. And my dad, he'll give you the, he'll give you his shirt off his back. That's the kind of parents I had. Uh, we always had a spread. That means we always had food on the table. Our lights always stayed on. He was a very hardworking man. And, uh, you know, sometimes you don't know what you got into is gone. And I wish they were still here today. But the more they sought for us, uh, you know, I don't take it for granted. I learned a lot from that. And also the neighborhood uncles and aunts that really was just friends, but they became like uncles, uncles and aunts. And, uh, you know, just learning from uh, different people and stuff. And, and learn, But the most important thing is learning respect. You respect the elders. And um, to be in that era, in that time, in that neighborhood back then, you could walk the streets freely. We hung out, we laid in the road. Very seldom a car would pass. <laughs> we always trying to wish we could go to Roxborough, but cars would pass. And then they built a pavement and built houses back on down around the curve from us. And then here go, we could go to Roxborough, start having uh neighbors passing through and stuff like that. And um, but the most important thing I want to touch on about in this neighborhood is uh the love that the elders show the young people how to love and care for one another. That's the main thing I want to touch on with that. And it makes a total difference when you have someone that really love and care for you and teach you the right way and the right values of life. And um, then just going to a school called Helena. That was my greatest experience ever. I had a gym teacher there named Miss Hope. I will never forget it. 
she was the greatest one-on-one -on -one person I ever know her and my speech teacher, Miss Blackwell. I will never forget them. I love them to life. They uh, taught me more manners and more respect, how to respect myself too. But they were awesome. They would take up time with individuals and that made you feel like you were special. That made you want to do better. And uh, when you want when you want to do better, you can be better. Can't be better unless you do better. So once you start wanting to do better, you become a better, better person in life and stuff. And uh, just start respecting other people and their choices that they make. And uh, sometimes it's hard for us to do that because they made this choice and you don't totally agree with it. But uh, once you have the right, the right values in your life and the right teachers, God placed the right people in your life. You just got to know that. And you got to learn and pick up stuff from that. And it'll take you farther in life, too. Uh, just respecting one another's values, one another's opinion. Whether we lack it or not, you still got to respect. And that's where a lot of stuff, it'll, it'll take you farther in life. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So tell us a little bit. You mentioned family. Your family is the Allen family, most notably, here in this um, Timberlake area, Soul City as they call it. Soul City. So tell us about those Allens. Well, uh, Lord Hammers, a lot of uncles, a lot of aunts, Pettifords, Allens, so many, it was so many. My, my granddaddy, this was the honest man in the world. You could get in trouble and if the law came looking for you, he was send the law where, you, where he was at. But he stood for he stood for truth. He stood for let's do it the right way. And he would always say, never tell an unnecessary lie. If you got the lie, he just said, keep it to yourself. And my and my uncles, all of them played ball, some type of ball. And I had two aunts, oh, Aunt Maggie and my Aunt Tina, they played softball. They was the sports ladies of the family. But getting together with, with your family, good God Almighty, I'm telling you, was the greatest love of all when you had everybody and all they showed was love. The gathering, the cooking, you watching them cook, you watching them, they teach you how to do a little whatever two step, dance step or whatever, coming together, showing you the importance of what family is. Some tradition things are still awesome in a way that we keep going just because of our family. But I come from a singing family too. And, but I can't sing a lick. Let me get that straight right now. I love quartet gospel. Uh, you got um, the loving sisters, evangelist Pamela Croom, they, 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 my, my cousins. And then you got Jamal Lawson, that my mama, oh, he always called my mama auntie, but he's our cousin. So my mama treated him like a nephew. And then uh, you got uh, Rabino Cooper Woods, a new creation. She's my cousin. And, uh, you know, I just come from a, a singing family. And then I, I got a best friend, y'all, which is family because we I got the Torrain families. They're not my family. We're, we're you no, know, we're just friends by choice, but we're family by love. But these people all became my family, but my real family, the Loving Sisters, Jamal Lawson, Rabina Cooper Woods uh, and my Uncle June. Oh, God, he could. Oh, God, he could Sam cook you to death. And I got a cousin. He's passed on. His name was John D. We call him Sunshine. He loved to Sam Cook too, but he could sing. And um, I'm going to dedicate this interview to my cousin John D., which, uh, you know, we found out he had just passed two days ago. But keep him in the family of prayer. My family, what I love about my family, they prayed. They prayed. They believed in God. If God said it was going to happen, they believed it. It was no doubt about it. They they just believed. And, you know, you got to have faith. And growing up with a family that believe in God, that know God, and trusted God, is uh, it, it means a whole lot to me now. Then I didn't understand some things, but now I do. And I know why they was a praying family, because a family truly that does praise together, does stays together. And that means a lot. And we are a knit tight family. We love one another. And uh, I don't think it's nothing that now one of us would do for the other one. 
when it comes down to it, it's just growing up. And we had fun. We had a good time, too. We really had a good time growing up. We didn't know what we thought wasn't much. It was enough. It was enough then. It was enough. Because when you look back and you wish you had what we had back then, and that was love and, and uh, family that really cared for you and cared about you and really instilled some uh, toughness in you and some respect. And I still go back to the respect and the caring, caring for other people. That's what I, I love about my family.